Hey guys, my name is Liz Cardwell. Uh, I'm the owner of We Magie. I make skin and body care. I'm super excited to be part of the Witchy Mamas summer retreat and uh, I'm really glad to have been invited to this. I make skincare from completely natural ingredients. Um, I use mostly food, honestly, uh, especially my face masks. Though. They're all made from different powders that are um, just sold in the grocery store for consumption. Uh, everything organic. If I can't get something organic, I make sure it's wild harvested. So I know it was not grown with pesticides. Um, I make a wide range of things, face serums, um, exfoliators, and my favorite, and the thing we're gonna talk about most, face masks. And the reason I like to talk about face masks is it's something that even if you don't have um, a supply on hand of you know pre-made masks, it's so easy to treat your skin well, uh, just with things that you have around your home. And one of the things that I feel is really important in skincare is setting your intention. Um, I'm a Reiki master, so I do Reiki everything that I make and I just set a blanket intention that my products are going to perform better than you expected. And it seems to work. So I highly recommend that no matter what skincare you're using, or if you're just gonna DIY something in your kitchen, um, set the intention. And it doesn't have to be a big fancy deal where you're making sigils or, you know, channeling energy. Um, you can just tell it what you want it to do and mean it, and it will makes a huge difference. So one of my favorite things about um, all my face masks are powdered since I don't use anything anything synthetic. Um, I also don't use water in any of my products so that I don't have to use a preservative. So everything is powdered and when you get it you will just mix it as you go. Um, this will go a long way because you only need about a teaspoon of powder for each face mask. So one of the things I really like to do is while I'm mixing it, I'll just have like these thoughts in my mind of warmth or, you know, the, the good feelings, like really bring that feeling up and try and dump that in <clears throat> as I'm mixing it. So it's a spell. It's totally a spell. And it's a lot of fun to bring more rituals, you know, into day-to-day -day life. And it, it, to me, it makes a huge difference. So let's talk about um, a skincare routine. A lot of people ask me, what is my skincare routine? And it's so simple. Um, I will use an oil cleanse. So I make an oil cleanser um, as one of my products, but Honestly, you can use, I really recommend oil over anything. Please don't use coconut oil. Um, I know a lot of people can handle it well, um, but the high oleic acid content will disrupt your acid mantle and that's what protects your face from any bacteria or anything like that getting in. So if you use coconut oil and you don't have any problems, okay. But if you've been thinking about it, I want you to try something else instead. Um, my favorite from something that you can just buy at the grocery store is hemp oil. I don't use hemp oil in any of my formulations simply because uh, it's very unstable. It's really, really, it's great for your skin. It has gamma, gamma linoleic acid in it. Am I even saying that right? <laughs> Not a scientist. Um, it's so good for your skin and gamma linoleic, that's it. Sorry, I had to look at my notes, um, but it's unstable. So what that means is it's gonna oxidize very quickly. As soon as you open that bottle, um, the countdown is on. So um, the oxygen molecules will go in, they'll disrupt the stable molecules 
of the hemp, cause everything to go haywire, and now you're making oxidation and you don't want that on your face. You want the opposite of that on your face. So buy it at the store, um, buy a small bottle and uh, keep it in your fridge. That's the, and you be sure you use it up in six months. It's not like as soon as you open it, it's gonna go bad. You got six months. So as long as you're buying a small bottle, you should be able to do just fine with that. So the first thing I do if I'm wearing makeup, um, I'll oil cleanse. So that means I might spritz my face with a little bit of water and then um, just put some oil in my palm, rub it together, warm it up, say your spell, and then just massage, massage all around. And this, especially in the eye area, I might do twice if I have on mascara. So then just take a warm rag and wipe it off. If you want, you can lay the rag on your face for like 30 to 60 seconds. That takes forever. That's, that seems like, oh, that's not very long at all. But when you're standing in your bathroom, it takes forever. So you do it if you, if you can. And if not, that's okay too. The added benefit of doing that is it will really get the steam from the hot water to loosen up because the oil is going to go into your pores and attach to any grime or an old oil and stuff like that that you want to get rid of. Um, so it'll really open everything up and just allow you to lift a lot easier. Um, the great thing about using a wash rag, you don't want one that's too soft or too coarse because that exfoliation is incredible. That's really, um, if you're exfoliating every day, you're going to see a huge difference in your skin and just something as simple as that counts. So I'll do that, uh, only once if I haven't worn makeup, if I've worn makeup, I usually do, I'll usually do it twice just to be sure. And then uh, once a week, at least, maybe twice a week, I'll use uh, a physical exfoliator. So like this product has um, hibiscus powder and blueberry powder. It's so lovely. It's this beautiful deep red and very, very, very finely milled rice powder. Um, I hold that all to the reason it's uh, like a paste is because I hold it all together with glycerin. So glycerin is a humectant, which means it will pull water into your skin. You have to be careful using glycerin or using any kind of a humectant because if there is no, if you leave it on your face and there's no water in the air, it will actually pull from your skin. So I like to use glycerin in this because then you, you wash it off. So you let it work for a minute. You can leave it on for 20 minutes if you want. There's no clay in it. It's not gonna dry out your skin. So rinse that off. You get the chemical exfoliation from the alpha, alpha hydroxy acids in the hibiscus. And then uh, also the physical exfoliation from the rice and even the hibiscus and the blueberry will give you a little bit of physical exfoliation. So that's something you can leave on, do it once or twice a week. Um, you can do a face mask every day. I used to just leave one of these jars by my kitchen sink and every morning I'd get up, make coffee, dump some of this into the palm of my hand mix it up at the kitchen sink, put it on my face, pack my kids lunch for school. And by the time I got done getting all that, I'd had it on for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes is really all you need because you don't want to let a face mask dry, especially if it has clay in it. Um, some of my masks have clay and some don't. And the ones that have clay, it's there for a reason, Like, but you, you still wanna be careful, don't let it dry, because again, it will pull moisture out of your skin. So, and also another big misconception is that they need to be two inches thick. You don't need a really thick layer of face mask. If it's just watercolor consistency, that's 
that's fine. It's still, your skin's still gonna drink it in. It doesn't, it just, it's a waste if you do it really thick because that outer layer that's sitting on top isn't even touching your skin. So think of it that way. Um, and you can do them every day. You can do, I think it's the single most effective thing you can do at home to improve the look of your skin. Um, I try and do it probably three times a week and I don't have a schedule. I still leave the face mask by the kitchen sink and whenever I've got the time, I'll just dump some in my hand and put it on. It's usually in the morning. I really love a face mask in the morning because you're just, you're putting this beautifully fed and tended to face out into the world. So do them at night if that's convenient, but if you can do a face mask in the morning, it's just a great start to your day. And again, a little bit of intention goes a long way. So mixing a face mask, all of mine are designed to, to be effective just being mixed with water. That's all it takes. They all have so many wonderful plants in them that they're gonna reconstitute with the water. And so they're, they're bringing their own nutrients to the game. But if you wanna step it up, soy milk is fantastic. I love using soy milk. Make sure it's the like unflavored, unsweetened, organic, plain soy milk. Um, that's so good, especially for mature skin. Uh, really helps to build collagen and it's, you know, you keep it in the fridge, it's nice and cold. There's something about a cold face mask that just feels incredibly rejuvenating. Uh, another favorite of mine is chamomile tea. So um, I grew up on the coast in the 70s and we didn't wear sunscreen. So I grew up with a lot of, like just setting the course for a lot of sun damage. And I've been able to correct the majority of that sun damage um, just from using things like rice, rice powder and chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is incredible. Anything with B vitamins in it, almost all of my masks will have a protein that contains B vitamins. If it's hemp powder, because hemp powder does not come with the instability that hemp oil does. Okay, we'll get back to that because I have something, <laughs> something else. Um, I always put a protein in it and it might be amaranth or quinoa or chickpeas um, because they have not only protein to help build collagen, but they also have B vitamins. And um, I see a lot of niacinamide serums, it's niacin, um, which is B5, I think. So, but I've always thought, why well, go through all the trouble to create, extract and create or synthesize or however they do it, this B5 in a lab um, when you can just put food on your face. The food's already, it's already in there. Like it's good. And you get all the other benefits that come from whatever food it is. Um, so, okay, stability. So hemp powder, uh, you get all the benefits from hemp oil because it's the ground up seeds, whereas the oil are the pressed seeds. So you're gonna get all the benefits. The oil is in the seeds, uh, obviously, but it's also in the powder. If you put just hemp powder on your face and washed it off, you would feel like you used a moisturizer. So, Another big one is vitamin C. So you probably know if you've ever used a vitamin C serum, you gotta use it fast. Um, vitamin C is another one, becomes very unstable, um, oxidizes very quickly. I think it's a lot faster than hemp oil. You don't have six months. However, if you use fruits like orange peel powder, or goji berries, or one of my favorites is camu camu, which has just sky high amounts of vitamin C. It remains stable until you reconstitute it with water. So again, you can get these benefits from vitamin C without having to wonder like, has this all 
dissipated, you know, because once the vitamin C is oxidized, there's no benefit and there's no way to tell looking at a bottle if it's, you know, still potent or not. So some of my favorite things to use, Camu Camu, incredible for all skin types. I love that one um, because of the vitamin C content. I love spirulina. Spirulina, I'm torn between, okay, is that best for problem skin? Is it best for mature skin? Is it best for dull skin? It's, it's one of those that everyone can benefit from with one caveat, it smells terrible. <laughs> so I make a face mask called Healthy and it's made with spirulina. I also put Camu Camu in it. Um, it the results are incredible with that mask. Spirulina actually um, really induces cell turnover. I mean, it's, it's, it's really incredible stuff. If you can handle taking spirulina every day, you probably should. Everybody probably should. Um, so this mask is fantastic. And if you have some spirulina powder in your pantry, you can mix it up and put it on your face. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. It's, it's, it's really that good that after using it just one time, you'll be like, hmm, all right. Um, but you better like the smell of seaweed. So something else that you might, so I, I mentioned tea, didn't I? About what to mix your face mask with. I love a chilled chamomile tea. Um, I love a chilled hibiscus tea, chilled peppermint tea. I like to use chilled peppermint tea just as a toner. Um, or especially like in the summer when it's hot or after you've been out in the sun, chilled peppermint tea on your skin is heaven. Um, but it increases circulation, gets everything moving, so that's always good. Um, you know, another thing that's good for that is cinnamon, but you have to be so careful with cinnamon because that stuff does not play. It is hardcore. The first time I decided to add cinnamon to a face mask, it wasn't, it didn't come, it didn't go well. And I, I thought I was just adding like a quarter teaspoon. That's fine. Mm -mm, that's not fine. No, you need like, there you go. <laughs> that's it. And I actually make an exfoliator with cinnamon in it. I was terrified. I, I knew that I wanted to use it because I knew the benefits of cinnamon and getting that circulation going. And I'll never forget the first, the trepidation I had the first time I put it on my face, but I use rice powder, a little bit of turmeric, turmeric, a little bit of cinnamon, smells like a snickerdoodle. It's incredible. And it's a powdered exfoliator. So unlike a uh, plump, that's a jelly, it turns into a jelly when you add water. It's more like a paste when you first open it. Um, you will just pour a little bit of the powder, just like a face mask, pour some in your hand, add a little bit of water. I always keep a jar of it in my shower. Um, because I don't use preservatives, don't keep it somewhere where it's gonna get wet. In my shower, it's up on a shelf on the away from the shower head. So uh, I'll just dump some into the palm of my hand, mix it up, and while I'm in the shower, use it. Snickerdoodles. And the rice will leave your skin feeling really soft and fresh, and the turmeric gives you a nice glow. It's anti-inflammatory, and then the cinnamon boosts that glow even more, giving you great circulation. So cinnamon, spirulina, any kind of powder that you have that's a protein, any kind of a grain. I don't recommend oatmeal though. If you have um, oat flour, it's pH is a little too high for me. It is an incredible cleanser. <laughs> it's, it contains natural, I have to say another science word. <laughs> It contains natural saponifins, I think that's right, which is literally soap. It's, it will like foam up when you, when you mix it up. Um, if you're familiar with like the little soap berries, you know, they're, you, you add water to them and kind of rub them around a little bit and they actually produce bubbles. Okay, so oat flour will do that as well, but the pH is a little high. Um, great for your skin, very calming, wonderful in a bath, not a fan of putting it on your face. For me, 
great cleanser, but if you're gonna use it as a cleanser for your face, I recommend adding something to it to bring that pH down. Um, I used to make a cleanser with oat that had uh, rose petals in it, very uh, powdered rose petals. They're very stringent, low pH, balanced it out beautifully, took it down to about a five. Um, of course, your water, whatever the pH of your water is, is gonna change the pH of your product. But just keep that in mind, oat's a bit high, so use something that's more stringent to bring it down. So astringent products, um, rose petals, uh, so rose petal powder, rose tea, hibiscus. So these things, uh, the astringent means that they are actually causing physical manipulation of your capillaries. Um, so they're actually causing contractions in your skin. Is it capillaries? Maybe. Science. I don't know. Uh, so they're normally recommended for oily skin. Um, I think they're great for anyone. They offer exfoliation because they, hibiscus, rose petal, they both happen to have these alpha hydroxy acids in them. Um, they're great for mature skin because you want that skin, the cells turning over and turning over and turning over and astringent products are great for that. So another thing you might have in your pantry is cacao. So unlike cocoa, um, the cacao beans are unroasted. So when you buy, you know, the bitter cocoa stuff that we all grew up with, um, that those beans have been roasted. And that's not my preference because that removes a lot of uh, the fats in them, those fatty acids. And so when you use cacao, they have not been roasted. Again, it's like hemp, it's just like using a moisturizer. Like if you just smear cacao, mix it with some water, smear it straight on your face. Um, when you wash it, your, when you wash it off, your skin is going to be baby soft, just soft, soft, soft. So, um, let's see, sweet potato. I use sweet potato powder, but if you're happen to be making some sweet potatoes, wouldn't be a terrible idea to just set a little bit <laughs> in a bowl, mash it up really, really well, put some water in it, smear it on your face. Um, so sweet potato is high in um, hyaluronic acid. The, so hyaluronic acid is plumping. It pulls moisture in, plumps out any fine lines that you might have. Um, it's temporary with each use but it's noticeable, it's a noticeable plump. So sweet potatoes are great for that. Um, if you pair it with something with vitamin C, then that really kind of supercharges that hyaluronic acid in it. Um, so something, I don't recommend you put a citrus fruit on your face. And that's probably what most of us have in our kitchen when we're talking about things high in vitamin C. Um, However, if you have blueberries, doesn't make for a great mask to mash up a blueberry because of the skin and everything. Um, but blueberries are a great choice. Um, let's see. What else is high in vitamin C? Don't put jalapenos on your face. <laughs> Sweet potatoes are fine alone. If you want to squirt some blueberries out of their skin to add them to it, even better. Blueberries are amazing anyway. Um, let's see. Matcha. Have I talked about matcha? Sometimes we got that laying around. I have, uh, I make a face mask that's really targeted for problem skin. It has matcha and hemp and also sulfur. Um, sulfur, I, I use, most of my products, I'm like, don't process it. I want as little processing as possible. Uh, sulfur is the exception because sulfur itself does not actually smell bad, um, but it's always found with another molecule bound to it. Don't know what it's called. Um, and that's what actually has the smell. So the sulfur that I use has been processed again to remove the stink 
molecule from it. Sulfur is so, so, so good for your skin. It's so good for your body. Um, so this mask that I use with matcha, uh, since sulfur can be drying, which sometimes is what you want. I love using um, the mask that I make with sulfur and matcha in it is called Clear. And I love using it as a spot treatment. That's how I really recommend everyone use it. It's incredible for bug bites. Mm, so is this one, by the way, this Recover has uh, activated charcoal in it with uh, rose petals. It's got cacao also. Incredible, incredible for bug bites. So mix it up really nice and thick, like I don't normally recommend. Put it on the spot that you need it or on the bite or whatever and let it totally dry. It's the only time I'll recommend, recommend letting a mask totally dry. Works like magic. So to counter the effects of the sulfur being drying, um, I add hemp, which like we talked about, has comes with its incredible oils. And I also add matcha because of its ability. It's so incredibly packed full of antioxidants and it's very calming to the skin. So for, like for any type of redness or irritation. So that comes in really handy also if you have problem skin. I don't expect you to have sulfur laying around. <laughs> I don't know why anyone would have sulfur laying around, but it's magic. Um, and it's very antibacterial. The clear mask, you can absolutely use it all over your face. Absolutely. The majority of my customers that are addicted to that mask do use it all over. <clears throat> but it's just kind of an added bonus when you can use something as a spot treatment as well. Um, sandalwood. I love sandalwood. You're not going to have it in your kitchen, but I want to talk about it anyway. Uh, I get my sandalwood from Australia. It comes only from fell trees, so they're not, you know, growing them to be turned into this powder. It's a small company that I get from. I love them. I love them. They're so great. And so it's sustainable. And sandalwood, um, so all wood is just naturally antibacterial. Um, if you have a wood cutting board, untreated, you know, mix it like, once, once it's got a sealant on it, you're not gonna get the benefits of the wood. Um, but if you have uh, an untreated wood cutting board and you were to cut up a bunch of stuff on it and then just leave it overnight, um, it would have far less bacteria. I mean, it'd, they'd be, it'd be almost totally gone compared to a plastic one, which would be flourishing. Um, so it's just what wood does. It's just a natural thing that it does. <clears throat> so if you have problem skin, um, sandalwood is amazing. Um, it's, it calms redness and, uh, brightens your skin. It, another one that has a bunch of oils in it. So it's also really good for softening your skin too, but it's kind of been used forever as a skin brightener. And, uh, aside from that, the antibacterial is just incredible in it. Um, let's see, what else might you have in your home? Oh, if you use any mushroom products, I know a lot of people have different powdered mushrooms in their pantry in place of coffee or just as a supplement. Uh, amazing for skin. So reishi is one of them. Reishi is probably my favorite. Um, oyster, I think it was oyster is actually one of the best for um, anti-aging. Reishi is just packed full of goodness. And, uh, you know, it's anti-inflammatory. Anti um, it's, since it's an adaptogen, it will actually like seek out damage. It's, it doesn't have one single target. It will just kind of um, do what needs to be done. So I love reishi for that. Um, I'm going to go over quickly some of the other foods that I use in my masks. Uh, blueberry, cacao, camu camu, hibiscus, lacuma. You might have that because you can buy that at the grocery store as a sweetener. It's very high in beta carotene, 
so which is vitamin A, um, but it's not, you know, when you use um, like retinoids that are really concentrated, that stuff burns, like it's, I uh, can't handle it. But something like lacuma, you're gonna get the benefit of that beta carotene, super gentle. It's not gonna burn your skin, it's wonderful. So I like using that. Matcha, orange peel, high in vitamin C. Um, it's mildly exfoliating, so I really like it. I use it in my face mask called Bright, because that's what it does. It just brightens you up. Um, peppermint is good. I wouldn't put like a peppermint tea bag straight on my face. It might be a little too tingly, but I love it as a, uh, as a tea. Um, rose petals, sandalwood, spirulina, sulfur, sweet potato, there's probably more, but these are a few of my favorite things. And if you have any of them in your kitchen, make your own face mask. Um, putting food on your face is amazing. E even bananas are great for your face. I just really can't handle that consistency. That I was, And I've even tried to use banana powder, um, but two, I had two issues with it. First of all, it was very difficult to find just freeze dried powdered bananas because a lot of times they'll spray them um, and they'll add anti-caking. None of my ingredients, uh, I always make sure they do not have anti-caking. They have not been spray dried. Um, so that was an issue with banana. I did find some that was just powdered banana and the consistency was like, <sighs> I couldn't. I couldn't handle it. Very high in potassium, which is great. You want that, that's great for dry skin. Super high in potassium, but you know what else is? Else is uh, coconut water. So just use organic, plain coconut water, and you can wipe it on your face. Don't leave it on because it is sticky, but you can wipe it on your face um, and leave it on for a while and then rinse it off and then follow it with a serum. Um, or you can mix your face mask with it to give you that boost of hydration. It makes a huge difference. The coconut water is no joke. And so after, after you're exfoliated, you're oil cleansed, you're exfoliated, you're masked, if you're masking that day, um, after that I'll follow with the serum. And I usually use the same serum day and night. Um, when I get up in the morning, I'll usually just wipe my face with a warm rag, put some serum on. Not too long ago, I had run out of serum. I had some upstairs in my office, but I was being lazy. So I just wiped my face and thought, I, eh, it's fine. I don't, I don't have to put any serum on. And all of my serums are made with, uh, they all have a base of watermelon seed oil because it's so incredibly friendly universally to any skin type. Um, it comes from a women's co-op in Africa. Um, again, it's wild harvested. They're not growing it. It just grows there. And so they collect it. So no pesticides um, and universally friendly and beneficial to skin. Anyway, I didn't go upstairs and get a new bottle. And I remember <laughs> looking in the mirror later that day and I was like, what happened to my face? <laughs> and it was really that big of a difference um, going from using my serum every day to skipping it just not for not even a full day. And I was like, hmm, that's kind of rough. <laughs> so it makes a big difference. Keep your skin happy. If it's not happy, it's gonna tell you immediately. And once you see how it looks happy, um, you're never gonna be able to go back. So take care of your skin, do your rituals, um, keep it simple. I just told you my whole skincare routine and it's three steps, sometimes four, for fun. So keep it simple, take care of your skin and pay attention to what you're putting on it. And um, you know, when you're getting some food out in the kitchen, think about, I wonder how this would feel on my face. 
and you don't have to know about it. If it's a whole plant, a whole food, it's not something processed and you <laughs> are kind of jonesing to put it on your face, you probably intuitively are picking up on something. So do it, do it. So um, thank you for being here with me and I hope that I've given some helpful inf information and I'm super happy to be a part of this. So thank you guys. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I love, love talking about skin and food and putting food on your skin. It's my jam.